So we're looking at standard 91028. This is your graphs and tables, relationships. Um, and this is the first exam out of the P book. So basic questions to start with. Study the flower head patterns created below using the matchsticks. Um, and they've asked us to draw the fourth design. Unfortunately, they don't give marks for neatness. So here's a slightly sloppy pattern number four for you. So just continuing the pattern that they already have. And moving on to the important parts. Give the rule for calculating the number of matchsticks required for the nth flower design. So remember, here we need to actually find a rule. So we're going to use stat on our calculators, if you remember that. And they've given us a table. So one of the first things that we can check, actually, is does this go up in a linear pattern? So we've got 12 to 20. That's a difference of 8, and 20 to 28, a difference of 8. And it looks like it will be a linear pattern. So let's go ahead and remind ourselves how to do this in the calculator. Um, going into menu and clicking on number 2 for stat and entering in the data from the table. So we have... Sorry, let's see if I can get this in the right spot. We have one, two, three, move over to the other side, we have twelve, twenty, and twenty-eight. And three points should be plenty. So remember from here we click on F1 for a graph, click F1 again for a graph, and then we want to calculate. And check yourself first, does this look like it's a linear relationship? It looks like it would be a straight line, so we are confirming what we expect there as well. And since it's linear, we're going to click on X. So that's F2. Remember, it gives us gives it to us in this funky format. But we just try to replace the variables. So A is going to be 8, and B is going to be 4. And also to check, to make sure that we've kind of got the right thing going, it's a good idea to see if your R squared value is equal to 1. If it's equal to 1, then you probably have a pretty good relationship in your table. If it's not, you should double check to make sure you've got the right points entered. So we're going to have y is equal to 8x plus b. Coming back in here, y is equal to 8x plus b. Oops, not b, it was 4. Double check that. 8x plus 4, yep. Okay, so using stat, we've got our rule, but we also need to make sure we use the appropriate variables. Remember, we always write x first, and then y second. So this is going to be my x, and this is going to be my y. So replacing those variables, the y is the big M, is equal to 8, and x is the little n, plus 4. So this is my general rule for finding the nth flower design, again, using stat in the calculator. And the next question they ask us is, how many matchsticks would be required to create design number 10? So think about what they've given you. Design number 10, design, that's the n. So this is n is equal to 10. Now two ways we can do this. One, we can substitute it, like we've learned from algebra, directly into our equation. So we had the equation m is equal to 8n plus 4 as our general rule. And we can take this n and plug it in to see what we get. So m is equal to 8 times 10 plus 4. 8 times 10 is 80, plus 4 is 84. So m is equal to 84. So I'd expect to use 84 matchsticks to get design number 10. Now the second way that we can use our calculator to help us figure this out is to use the table function. So if we go back to our calculator, back to the menu, and we're going to select F number 7 for table. So I'm going to enter in my general rule as I see it. So m equals 8n plus 4, using x as our variable, and make sure you use this key here for x. Don't try and use the m or the n or whatever, just use the x. So we have 8x plus 4. Go ahead and press enter. So now we've entered in that equation. Click on table, F6. And we've been given information. 
So we see our first points match up, 12, 20, 28, and now we can actually see we've got a lot more points in there. So one thing that I can do is come in and find when x is equal to 10 what my y would be. But good thing here, we've got a reminder, um, my x in this table is only going to 5, so what can I do to fix that? Hit exit to go backwards, and we're going to click on F5 for set. And here I can pick what x values I want to do. So I'll start with 1, and I need to go at least to 10, so maybe I'll do 20, just in case they ask more questions. Hit your blue button, hit your blue button, and here we go. Um, go ahead and hit table again and scroll down. This time we see go past 5 and we can get to 10 and we see that when we have x is equal to 10, y is equal to 84, just like we found here, but using the table is another way to do it. Okay, moving on. On the grid below, sketch a graph showing the number of matchsticks required for up to the 10th design. So we need to put in the matchsticks on here. Um, so let's think about this real quick. If we think about our pattern, just come back and look at it for a second. Can we have half a matchstick? Can we have half a pattern? Can we have three quarters of a matchstick or three quarters of a pattern? You should be answering no, we cannot. It needs to be a whole pattern, a full design used, made with full matchsticks. And that gives us information about what kind of graph we should make. So we need to be using a discrete graph. So we're using little dots, and this is because we can only have whole numbers, so must be whole numbers. Okay, so n is along the bottom, this is our pattern number, and m, the number of matchsticks, is along the side. So we need to think about what we would put in. Can we have a zero pattern? Nope. So we actually don't put a number on the zero axis, on the y axis here, at zero. But we can we can have the first pattern, and the number of matchsticks for the first pattern is 12. If we read off the table, so go ahead and put in a little dot, and we can use the calculator to show us our table points. So we have 12, 20, 28, and 36 as our first ones. So 1, 12, and next one is 2, 20. 2, 20, and then we're going to have 3, oh, hang on a minute, that's not 12. Watch how our axes go up, 5, 10, 15, 20. So we need to go for pattern 1, we need 12 matchsticks, so that would be slightly under 15. And here we are at 20, and next one is going to be at 28, which will be slightly under 30. And for number 4, we need 36, so 4 is going to be 36, which will be slightly above that one. And for number 5, 44, number 5 is 44, come in and find it. And we should see that this is kind of going up by 4s, right? So number 6 should be 48. Oops, not 48. Number 6 going from 44 plus 8 would be 52. So that should be our next one. Double check that, yep. So 52, slightly above. Our next one is going to be 60 on the line. 68, slightly below. Number 9 is going to be um, 76 slightly above the line, and number 10 should be 84. Okay, so the next question you'd ask yourself is, do we connect this graph with a line? Would we go like this and draw a straight line on there? Well, if you're saying no, nicely done. We do not, because it's discrete, so it must be whole numbers, meaning we can only have the data at these points. I can't have one and a half patterns. I can't have twelve and a half matchsticks, so I only have points on these discrete values here, and that's how we get our complete graph. OK, 
Okay, so make sure that you are graphing it from um, number 1 to number 10 like they've asked. And again, we don't use 0 because there's no 0 pattern. We wouldn't build it. All right. Um, last part of this question. Give the rule for the total number of matchsticks needed to complete the first n number of designs. And use this rule to find the total number of matchsticks required to complete the first 10 designs. So we need to think about what we're doing here. And it's a common problem we see where they ask us to actually find the total. So to remind us of what we're doing here, we've got n, m. We've already got this information. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 the first five points, and we've got 12, 20, 28, 36, and we have um, sorry, going from here, so from the patterns we have to figure out what's our total number, and that's what they're asking us to figure out, so our total numbers. So for the first pattern our total number of matchsticks is 12, but for the second pattern we need to be pattern 1 and pattern 2, so that's 12 plus 20, which is equal to 32. And for the third, we would build pattern 1, pattern 2, and pattern 3, oops, not 3, 28, which gives us a total of 60 if we add it up. And carrying on again, we need 12, 20, 28, that's equal to 60, plus the number for 36, or for pattern 4, which is 36, so we end up with 96. So our total column is actually becoming these values here, 12, 32, 60, 96. And those are, again, the numbers that we would need to build all those patterns. So only pattern 1 would take 12, pattern 2 and 1 would take 32, pattern 1, 2, and 3 would take 60, and 1, 2, 3, and 4 would take 96. Okay. So now use the rule to find the total number of matchsticks. Well, we haven't found the rule yet, so what are we going to check here again? Let's check to see if we have a linear difference between these. So between 12 and 20 for my first difference, sorry, between 12 and 32 for my first difference, I've got a difference of 20. And between 32 and 60, I've got a difference of 28. And between 60 and 96, I've got a difference of 36. Okay, so this is not linear, because it's not going up by the same amount each time. So we can check, again, that was our first difference. So we can check now the second difference, the difference of the differences. What do we have here? 8. And here, again, a difference of 8. So here we're seeing the pattern starting to become regular on the second difference. So what kind of rule we have? This means that we will have a quadratic, an x squared type of rule. So now that we know that information, we get to use our calculator. So again, using stat to find the rule. So let's get the calculator up. Move it over a little bit so we can see our points. Menu, going into stat, and we can leave these values, one, two, three, We'll put in 4. And coming over here, we want to put in our totals. So the ones highlighted in yellow, we had 12, we have 32, 60, and 96. Our new rule in here. Okay, so we have our matching points. Again, to figure out what the rule is, we hit graph at F1, graph again. And now take a look at this. Does it look like a straight line? It shouldn't. It should look kind of like a parabola, and we do see it's slightly curved. So we hit calc, and we're not going to use x, that's for linear. We're going to use x squared, that's for the quadratic, so f4. And again, we get it given to us in this funky format, but it's very usable. So we see that a is 4, b is 8, and c is 0, so we should have 4x squared plus 8x plus 0. And again, double checking our r squared value is equal to 1, so it's likely that we put the right data into the table. Again, if you get 0.98 or 0.88, you should double check the values in your table to make sure you didn't make a typo. Okay, so writing down our rule, in general, our calculator gave us y was equal to 4x 
squared plus 8x plus 0. Now we don't have to write the 0, but we do need to make sure we rewrite our variables in the right way. Remember, x is always first, and then we have y. So coming back in and replacing our variables, our y in this case, we can use t for total, is equal to 4, and our x in this case is still in. 4n squared plus 8n. And that's our rule. Okay, so that's the first part, finding the rule. And now we're going to use the rule. Again, they want to know how many matchsticks total would it take to build the first 10 designs. So they're talking about building designs 1 to 10, all of them. So n is equal to 10. And again, we can use algebra and substitute that in if we wanted to, putting it in. So we could have t is equal to 4 times 10 squared plus 8 times 10. And we would get, well, 10 squared is 100, 4 times 100 is 400, plus 80. <coughs> so we would get 480. And again, if you're not sure, or if you've got hard data to deal with, you can always check it in your calculator. So going back to our calculator, menu, going into table, Actually, if you go back to stat, something you can do here. If you want to, you can copy this. Hit copy. It'll put it and say where do you want it, so you can just hit OK, hit the execute button. And now if you exit back and go to menu, and we go down to table, look, there's our equation, 4x squared plus 8x plus 0. <coughs> so let's double check what we have our values set to, 1 to 20. That should be pretty good with a step of 1. Click OK and our table. So sometimes this happens. If it does, don't freak out. Just exit back. Sometimes when we copy, the variable is unhappy with the way things are done, so we might just have to write it out by hand. So we'll go 4x squared plus 8x. <coughs> and we don't need the plus 0, so we'll leave that off. We'll go into table. There it is, all our points. So we scroll down to get x is equal to 10. And what do we see? When x is equal to 10, y is 480, which is exactly what we found. When n is equal to 10, in this case, the total number of matchsticks is 480, so 480 matchsticks. Which isn't so bad. Alright, well done on that one. That's the end of question one.